fun how you can sometimes stumble over the interesting ones just because you're trying to be as true to the uh, product as possible. So. Oh, she, <laughs> but the, the, that guy, yeah, they got frog eyes, right? Mm. Yeah, the Innsmouth look. The creature of the marsh. Yeah, that's a. Now I have to keep an eye out for comments because Stan Brown was commenting that I never watched the comments. And I'm kind of going, okay. Uh, he's right. I never do watch the comments. And uh, now I'm trying to just get to my Zoom. Oh, here's Katie trying to get in. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. It is, or rather, this is the April 11th, 2023 ver version of Epic Sketch Time. Epic Sketch Time is an online drawing group. We meet weekly. Currently, that is at 4.30 Pacific time. Check us out on Facebook. Look for my YouTube channel. Um, look down in the doobly-doo below. You'll find links to various people's um, websites if you're if you come here for more than three times you get a post a link to whatever yeah, Facebook don't, page yeah please do not post my link <laughs> uh, because uh, i already got uh, you know some people already hacked my facebook page and all that stuff so oh yeah, no yeah there some people suddenly they decide to hack yours you know they have nothing else to do make other people life a little bit more miserable so i'm going to ask every i'm going to start the introductions everyone follow my lead with your name location and the project you're working on today uh, my name is mark monlux i live in tacoma washington and today i'm going to be putting together an invite for a drawing session and then i'm going to uh, look for uh, art reference for a drawing that I want to do for another horror movie monster. Oh. And maybe I'll actually start working on that drawing. I'm hoping to just be able to import a drawing I did on my other computer. So if I'm staring off into this field, it's because one, I'm trying to keep track of any type of comments that are coming in. And two, I, I got two computers that are distracting me. Bill, you're next. I am Bill Morse. I'm a cartoonist and illustrator living and working in Seattle, Washington, and I do a web comic called Rhapsodies. And today I'm playing catch up, uh, working on one of those strips. Ron, it's your turn. Oh, I am a retired person and I just uh, doing for fun. And so today I'm trying to practice to see if I can draw some cats. Oh, I love drawing cats. I have so many pictures of cats to show you. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Katie, it's your turn. Hello, Katie. Oh, she's hey, looking. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I <laughs> Today's my technical difficulty day. Um, and it seems like I've missed a couple weeks, but hi, I'm Katie. And I um, am an artist and writer um, from the Pacific Northwest, Bonnie Lake, Washington, to be specific. I'm on Instagram as Evil Girlfriend Media. And I'm sorry I was late today. I actually have been not painting as much. You can see I'm still working on the same tarot cards <laughs> I've been working on for a couple of weeks, but I'm wrapping up a short story collection and I just got off the phone with a beta reader. So um really excited about that. Oh no. Nice. Oh, fun yeah. stuff. And yeah. I notice you still are having a head problem with the middle <laughs> image. <laughs> I just decided I was gonna work on these two little dogs on the end and then I'm going to I actually have a different cat. I may just paint over all of this. Um I don't know. 
I, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it figured out today. I, I think I think the rest <laughs> of the painting is fine. I think you just need to get a cat head and paste it on there, and you'll be good to go. Last <sighs> week we got distracted. We were all doing drawings of frogs. Oh, so, um, okay. Maybe maybe today we'll draw pictures of cats. Oh, that would be fun because I can always use tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> you know this. Oh, um, let's see. I get my tablet. So you got your catalog? <laughs> oh, oh! I am going to hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're laughing, I'll be catalog. Oh. oh, I can't oh. believe I, it took me this long to get to. Oh, get to oh, the... Bill, that's a catastrophe that you haven't caught on yet. <laughs> I not I caught on about a minute ago. <laughs> Let's see. So it was about three years ago, and I'm going to open up screen sharing here. That I wanted to improve my cat drawing skills. So I told myself it was October and I would draw one cat every day. Oh wow. And and so I started by drawing my own a childhood cat. Let me see if I can find this. Well, first, I have to open up the system to share screen. Click on the AirPlay button. Pull down on the share button on my iPad. Start my mirroring. Where is my cat? So I started with, uh, let's see. This is the first one I started with, which this is my cat, Brad, from when I was a kid. He's a Siamese cat. Oh, it's a beautiful cat. And uh, I just worked from memory. And I was going to, I thought, you know, I can do some realistic cats. Well, I was also going to try doing just cartoon type cats. And then my friend, um, John said, oh, can you draw my cat? So I did his cat. He sent me a photo. And all I did was I basically just traced the photo of his cat. He had, this is a what's called a tuxedo cat, a cat that just has black and white fur. And then I posted those two cats on Facebook, and I got 150 cat photos the next day by people asking me to paint their cats and then by the second day there was 250 I said okay people I'm only uh you're gonna have to pay me to get your cat drawn and I ended up doing cat commissions all that month and wow. so, some of them were very simple like the silhouettes like this one mm -hmm. And others were more involved where I had to, you know, try to figure out the fur patterns. And I don't know if this actually helped me uh, learn how to draw cats, but it, it reminded me about some cat shapes. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do an overdrawing to show some of the features I've learned about uh, cats. Let me get my red pen here. The first thing I remember I've learned about cats is their back structure when they're sitting is really interesting. Um, I want to make sure I get this layer on the top most layer. Here we go. And I'll choose a red color. Is this arch? that comes up from the 
tail. Oh, I got a low battery. It, it really does kind of dip down a little bit towards the shoulder and then come up again right above the shoulder. And there's something in Japan called onigiri, and it's a basically a, um, a, a triangle-shaped rice cake. Mm -hmm. So whenever I draw the hip of a cat, I think of an onigiri, and then I, I put a little foot out from it. And then from there, I do this arch. And I make that about, you know, the same height as where the hip is. And then I kind of mentally draw a ball shape here where the cat's knees at. And I do another arc that goes from the middle of the ball up to where the height is of the of the back and then I put a the little bit of a shoulder and a cat's face is this interesting trying I think it's this wonderful triangle shape and then from there I do like a box and then I kind of figure out what that curve is over the top of the box. And kind of just base everything off that. The a thing about the nose and the mouth is I'm going to switch over to a different color. Is this shape with the mouse? Uh, pardon me, mouth. It's sort of like just a inverted V. Oh, I'm going to redraw that. If you make those lines just straight, it looks like the cat's forward. But if you draw them like this, it looks like the cat's amused or smiling because the corner of the mouth is up. When I draw the nose, the cats have a little split in their nose right down the middle, and then their nostril is kind of like right there. And you, I'm going to switch back over to a, I'm going to switch to a brighter color. Here we go. Draw a line up. And then this corner point off to the side. Um, if you want the cat to be looking more up, like this is the cat's face taken from the side view, then you want to see less of the forehead. But if you want the cat's head to be down, you need to make sure that this forehead is down as well and that your eyes are down farther if, if you change the shape of this of this rectangle and make it uh, uh fatter like this then mm -hmm. the, uh, the cat's eyes will be farther down the head and the ears will be up higher and you'll see more of the top of the cat's head and if it's higher up like this then you'll see more of the cat's eyes and mouth like if he's yawning or something. So, and I was noticing that if you divide the face into five sections, you can make the uh, eyes kind of fit that part. And that's realistic in proportions if you want to make 
the cat's eyes look more uh, luminescent or staring, you just increase the size of the cat's eyes. And you can actually get rid of these bone, uh, this structure right here on the nose. There's all sorts of things you can have fun. There's, there's a little kind of dent right there for on some cats mm -hmm. and some cats this nose is pushed up and and up higher and all and the mouth is really up in the middle of the face especially like on persians with An interesting thing I learned about cats is that cats do not have eyebrow muscles. Dogs have eyebrow muscles, which is why they're so expressive. But the only way you can really show off a cat's eyebrows is by drawing the, uh, the lines over its head. All a cat can do is have its eyes be wider or more narrow for expression. Oh. Back to the overall form. The shoulder for the cat isn't here. You might think it's here, but it's, the shoulder is actually way up here. So when you draw the arm, and bring it down, a cat will either put its feet in really close and get this kind of poofy chest look with both the paws. In this situation, this cat's, uh, this foot is out forward, it just, it just kind of swung out. Anyway, I'll just leave that up on the screen for a little bit. I don't know if you can make any sense of it. I tend to draw a cat's head first and, and then figure out what the rest of the body is going to do after that. If I have the head higher on the shoulders, the cat looks more alert than if I have the, the cat's head sunken down on the shoulders. or on his body, his, his tail, sitting down. Anyway. Well, let me, uh, I'm gonna just hide the rest of this cat. Maybe you can see the lines then. So that's sort of like my mental thinking of when I'm drawing a, a rough sketch of a cat. Okay. I also like to, uh, I'm just gonna pull up a new window altogether. I like the way that, that cats' bodies can stretch. Mm -hmm. So when I'm drawing cartoons of cats, I'll often, Let's see, I'll pull out the... Let's see. So I'll draw a cat's head up here. I'm gonna push his ears back a little bit to look like motion.
this is how, and I'm thinking to make the cat look like it's jumping. I'll just draw like an arch like this and have his feet come forward. I love drawing cats like this, where they're just in a leapy arch. Just totally cartoon and then have the, sometimes I'll do the tail up like that. Or if I really want to make the, the cat look like it's in a dive, I'll, or flying, put it there. And this will be my, my rough underline for the drawing. So I'll go back in and I'll usually start with the eyes. I'm gonna fade back that background even a little bit more. Then the nose. little bit of the side. That ear didn't come out right with this. I'll even draw his eyebrows shooting back, his whiskers shooting back and I'll make him look a little frightened. In cartoon, they use people who draw cartoon usually eliminate a digit from the pause, right? Or the yeah, I I uh, I kind of like the splayed toe look on a cat if. I don't spend a lot of time making pictures of like most cats toes have uh, uh, a strong paw look like this. Yeah. And so I tend not to spend too much time trying to figure out what, what this paw structure is. I, I tend just to go with big, you know, round marble toes and hope for the best. Oh, I'm running out of juice on my battery. That's your iPad battery? Yes, my, my iPad batteries are a little low. I didn't charge them last night. Oops. I think I'll, oops, drying on the wrong layer again.
today I was in Seattle talking to some students at the uh, Seattle Central University about drawing cartoons for a living. Yes. And so I was doing my presentation, suddenly there was all this ruckus and the, there was a student walkout. So I didn't get a chance to talk as long as I wanted, only 45 minutes. I'm gonna put in a little bit of white here for this cat's ears and on its nose, the bottom of its tail on its paws. And then I'm gonna fade back that white a little bit. There we go. So that's my cat drawing. He look more happy than scared. <laughs> oh, I can make, um, let me change that then. I mean, let, let me make him look more happy. I can go, I haven't drawn his mouth yet. I'll get to the right layer. There he goes. Now he looks very happy. I will even go in to his eyes. Put some colors in his eyes. Maybe blue's not the right color. I'll, I'll switch over to green. That's better and I'm going to go in Give a slightly darker I don't know if that looks better or not. Maybe it was better without the, the color in his eyes. Yeah, I like him better without. Yeah. <clears throat> These are some of the, this is my uncle's cat. That's one serious cat. <laughs> and you can see I did some tricks here with the shadows. I made the top of of the eyes, mm -hmm. I, I added a little bit more of a blend, made it a little bit more dark up here and then right underneath it, that's where I put the highlights to kind of bounce up and make this whole eye look like it's looking upward. This is my my cousin's cat. <laughs> I did the same trick, making a little bit of a shade right there. And then the highlight right above it. I got really good at doing cat size by the time I was done with this project. And once I figured out that trick with the, uh, with the, the highlighting of, you know, of the shading of the eyes, I just used it on all the, all of them after that. Oh. And then I really like this one because this is the cartoon adage why draw arms or legs or hands if you can hide them all? Mm -hmm. like the only thing that's I'm not hiding on this is the ear. <laughs> yeah.
anyway, I should, I'm thinking that maybe I'll do some more cat drawings, but rather than doing realistic cats, I want to really work on doing my cartoon cats. Okay. But well, I, I, you're I the take, professor tonight. <laughs> I'm going to let Bill, Bill, have you looked up how to draw cats? Or are you busy working I, on your project? Well, I put the link to an Etherington Brothers uh, link for the uh, for doing heads. They didn't do anything for the rest of them. Ah, so there's a, a link in the chat on how to draw cat heads. Yep. These these guys are very good for just about anything. Yeah. Okay. So I so under the, under the chat. Uh huh. Thank you, Bill. No problem. I mean, recently for my uh, problem animal that I've been trying to do is uh, getting better at drawing horses because I've been doing a illustration project that has far too many horses. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since I will freely admit that I can barely even trace horses, I followed a colleague's advice of, of anything you have trouble drawing, uh, do at least a hundred of them. So I'm about up to, I don't know, uh, I think I'm up to about 50 or so. Now, didn't you go out and get a toy horse to draw from as well? Oh, yes. There, yeah, there's, a, there's this toy shop in Ballard that, exp that specializes in these great European, European imports. And if you want anybody who uh, wants good uh, reference models, I very much recommend this company. Ah, Schleich. They do everything from dragons to uh, barnyard animals, and they're and they can. And if you know that you're going to draw a lot of something, they're a very good thing to have in your arsenal. If you draw a bunch of zebra, you don't have to mu worry much about detail. <laughs> yeah, and. And happily, there are several zebras at the zoo that I can use as models as well. I frequently the biggest trick I've learned is to start with the torso and work the way, and then work out from there. And a mutual friend of mine and Mark's, uh, Donna Barr, is who is very good oh, at drawing horses. Donna, Escape Donna's very good, very good at drawing horses. Oh. She likes to draw centaurs. Yes, men and horses together. And she's good at drawing centaurs too, but no, she's got the, she, she only draws with a few quick curvy lines and she's got the horses down. Yeah. And she's very good. The last time I was with her in person, she walked me through it where, where one of the things that she uh, points out is that frequently one of the reasons people have a, uh, Oh, have trouble with horses is that you don't realize that uh, is that there are their limbs work completely different. So essentially the essentially this bone here is pretty much hidden underneath the body as a up with the pelvis. And so what you think what you think is the humerus is actually just the uh, one finger. <laughs> oh. Oh, Katie, you were actually busy drawing a cat's face. Ah, uh, I think that's working. Oh, I... Yeah, I think it's working. I cannot get off mute to save my life today. Sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's going to work. I'm reshaping this arm because when you were talking about the shape of like where the shoulder actually is, and then you were talking about how there's like the dip when they're sitting. So like I just slightly added a dip um, and then I'm cutting back the size and, and the shape of the arm a little bit to um, kind of comb balance out the head to the size of the spine <laughs> and I, it was funny when you said oh yeah you should draw the head first I was like now you tell me now you tell me <laughs> that should do the head first huh instead of just outlining it you know just make sure that head fits because well, that's as I said for my, my <laughs> as far as I've said for with horses especially but bipeds in general I frequently as I said I found starting the torso to be very a good way to go. It even works with humans. It keeps me from drawing the heads too big, which when I start with the head is something I do quite frequently. I'm really bad about that too. I'm also really bad about, I was looking at a bunch of stuff last week and um, I was like, gosh, I love making big eyes on everything. Everything's got to have a big set of eyes that I draw. And that was really funny seeing that. <laughs> yeah, we all have our little idiosyncrasies, but yeah um I had a guest artist in uh, residence last week my niece was here and so we did a baby bulldog and she actually observed that she's like you made his eyes too big I'm like he's a baby bulldog they all have big eyes and she goes she noticed she said you make everything have big eyes <laughs> <laughs> British or French. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's kids for you. They'll notice all that stuff. But I love how um her as well as my nephew, like, you know, seeing children, um, like how they see the world and then they how they draw it. It's just so fascinating to me. I love it. I love seeing it in action and how they they just draw everything but yes I'm actually very grateful for the cat tutorial today that was within like a couple of minutes I was like okay I know what I'm doing wrong with my proportions for this cat immediately when I saw you <laughs> I was like this is all I have to do So now I'm in a, oh, I haven't been checking to see if anyone's making comments. Nope, no comments on the video. Is it on Facebook or YouTube or? It's on YouTube, but I okay. have it, I have it. Uh, pause. Let me, uh, yes, yeah, Stan was watching us when we do it on Facebook and then, uh, he was noticing that I wasn't keeping track of comments or anything. So yeah, it's currently live right now on uh, YouTube.
I'm in the middle of inviting people to this uh, drawing session that I have going on later this month. What kind of drawing is it? Well, I get the um, people, it's live drawing of some models and it's held at a at the Grand Cinemas in Tacoma on the fourth Wednesday between six and eight and it's free for anyone to come and draw. And I get uh, people who do cosplay at conventions to come in in their costumes and oh. do the models. I mean, idealistically, you would want to have a nude because nudes are fantastic. People love drawing nudes, but this is a public space. And so they got to keep their clothes on. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so. Not I mean, Florida. But I found out a long time ago that people would lo love to draw people in interesting outfits. So sometimes I'll get actors from community theater to come in in their costumes, or I'll have uh, some demolition derby girls come in wearing their their knee pants and uh, and their skates, and I'll pile them on top of each other like they're, they've been in a pile up. I just have a lot of fun with it. But uh, cosplayers are a uh, good way of going. Oh, and as far as other events are concerned, I might as well plug one that I'm running this weekend. Is Cartoonist Northwest, the uh, Juanel Tamal, who is a Mexican cartoonist. Oh, that sounds great, Bill. There's a lot of uh, yeah. funny animals and such. I need to spend more time making lists on my Facebook page so that doing these invites can be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just invited Katie to the drawing session. I don't expect you to come, Katie, but you're getting an invite anyway. <laughs> oh, so did I, apparently. Oh, 
I think you guys are underneath my artsy types mailing list. I mean, if it's a weekend, I might be able to pull it. Oh up. no, Bill, it's a Wednesday. Mm. Yeah. That's, this, that's this month. <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's the fourth Wednesday. Oh, I'm too far away. Ah. Uh, I'm dri be driving west from east coast to west coast. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are. Yeah, we it will be like a whole month's journey. We're going to Penn State or something. You know, driving from South Carolina to Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, cool. New Mexico. Oh, oh wow. fun! Nevada. And then we end up in California. Yeah. Ah, you're it's not coming up to Washington to visit me? <laughs> <laughs> not only 4,000 miles by the time <laughs> you're <to> California. <laughs> mm. oh, the, my friend from um, Australia is coming, you know, so, so uh, I yeah. said, oh, well, this is her, her trip for her lifetime. A couple of years ago, she lost her husband. So now she, now she can go and leave. Uh, so, you know, so I said, oh, I, th I take you to the United States. So by the time we get to California, she said, can you take, me? I have, I know somebody in North California. Can you take me there? I said, do you know where in California? She had no idea that California is bigger than Vietnam. Oh, you she know? did it. It's oh, so... you know, I'm not going. You know, he said like, oh, you live in Vietnam, but you live in South Vietnam or North Vietnam. So you know, so you drive from Southern California to. So that, Seattle? is is she is she uh, narrowing it down for you? Is her friend going to be anywhere near? Her? <laughs> she had no idea, and I, so she said, "Well, she told me it's near a Vietnamese town." Vietnamese, like <laughs> well, admittedly, there are some pretty big Vietnamese communities in California. Yeah, and there is, a, or I think there is a small one in, in Seattle too. Right? Oh yes, there is a fairly uh, decent. Yeah, because one. I have noticed that pho is getting popular. Oh, I when I think of fast food, I think of pho way before I think of hot hamburgers. Yeah. There's about there's about three excellent pho places in. Uh, in uh, in my neighborhood, and there's two other uh, delicatessens that do wonderful banh mi. Yeah, banh mi. Yeah. So, so when she said that, I said, well, "You don't know what's going on in this country here." <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but even uh, Australia, one end of Australia and to the other end, it's not that easy, right? Oh no. <laughs> right. I visited Australia in 97 and I only saw a little bit of it. I saw Sydney, a, an island on the Great Barrier Reef, and then another island near Cannes. And it, it was a wonderful trip. I would love to see more of Australia. We kept away from the outback. We didn't go in there at all. We just stepped, stayed to the coast. Because be a lot of animal for you to draw. No, oh, yes. <laughs> and I did do a lot mm -hmm. of drawing. I kept a, a drawing journal. Every day I would write in a book and I would draw pictures of what I was what what was uh, happening. Yeah. I should uh, post that sometime. Yeah. yeah. We went to a kiwi farm. The food is nice. <laughs> Kiwi fruit farm, I hope, trust, considering how much the uh oh. or are you talking are you talking about the little bird kiwi or are you birds. talking about the yes, bird? Yeah. In New Zealand, farm? we went to New Zealand and saw the and visit the kiwi. They they're, live at night. So they're so cute. Be, yeah, they're cute. Mm. I didn't know they are night creature. And uh, I told yeah. her we were visiting any beaches because uh, they have a 10,000 beach. So if you visit one beach a day, that would take you 27 years. Wow. Yeah, my folks saw the Kiwis when they were there. 
apparently they uh, have some very strict uh, rules about interacting with them. So what the uh, tour guide said is you're not allowed to uh, uh, get deliberately get within uh, about 20, 20 meters of them. However, if the Kiwi decides to come towards you, you don't have to move. Yeah. When I was on the Great Barrier Reef, um, I was at a marine sanctuary, was connected right next to the, this island had two things, a resort and a, on one side and a marine sanctuary on the other. And they were going out and tagging sea turtles and they would bring them in. And so my wife and I, we went over there and for a day we were lifting sea turtles and putting them in wheelbarrows and moving them around for them and helping out. So we had a good hands-on experience with sea turtles legally. Otherwise, you're not supposed to touch or molest sea turtles. But we molested a lot of sea turtles that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a, I have a friend who is uh, in Queensland who claims that she lives in the middle of nowhere, but in reality, it sounds like it's a three-mile, three-hour drive from uh, from Sydney. <laughs> To the point where she's had a several business trips there. Yeah. Now it's really difficult to determine the sex of a sea turtle. the The surest way they've found is by doing a laparoscopy on them. So what they do is they make a small incision, they blow the sea turtle, the inside of the sea turtle, up with air so that they can put in a little camera. And look, and from the inside, it's very easy to see what type of sex organs they have. So. Well, they should think like a sea turtle because I don't think that sea turtle do that to each other before they make. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have to deflate the sea turtles. Oh dear. And, and it's better to have them on their backs because if they're on their backs, they just, relax and sit there but they have this habit of constantly holding their breath even when they're on their backs or so they make these snorting sounds all the time when they breathe because that's just what they do they they don't know how to just casually breathe they only know how to breathe by holding their breath and to catch a sea turtle what they do is they jump in the water and all they have to do is turn the sea turtle on its side and then their ballast gets all confused and they just float right up to the top. So I learned so much about sea turtles. I could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I went well watching last week. That's actually where I was when um, I was up in Skagit Valley when you, you were like, are you coming to the meeting? And I was like, oh, no, I'm on vacation. And um, I learned a lot about whales. I it's very fascinating. Um, killer whales, um, they're an interesting creature, that's for sure. Oh, definitely. Um, but I'm we got to see up. To say I've never seen them out here. Um, it was really cool. We saw a pot of five. And the youngest one was 18 months old. And the little, the little one, even though he's probably still weighed the size of, you know, weighed almost as much as a car. I don't know. They weigh, how much do they usually weigh? They can weigh anything up to what, like 20,000 tons. Um, but anyway, so the little one that was 18 months old was like really goofy and like a little cheese and was like jumping up in the water so we could see her full head. And she literally looked like she was smiling. And then the rest of them were just kind of, you know, up and down, up and down. And the tour guide was telling us that, um, kind of like you were saying about the kiwis and the turtles, it was like, you can go up to them and you can turn the boat off. And if they stay around you and they like want to play or show off for you, it's fine, but you cannot chase them. And so these killer whales were like circling our boat. And I think at one point, like I was really uncomfortable because they went from one side to the other, just like, you know, directly across. I was like, oh my God, they had to swim under this boat. 
<laughs> it's like <laughs> nobody wants that. But they could were staying under the water for about 15 minutes. And then the tour guide, he said, yeah, usually they'll show off. They'll play with us. Basically, they toy with us for about, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. They like to toy with people. And what they'll do is when they realize the humans are out on the deck, they'll go from side to side and watch the humans run back and forth across the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and they basically play with you until they get tired and then they just swim off. And so... But that is exactly what happened. They played with us and they would watch all the people run back and forth across the boat. And then like everyone kind of calmed down and then they were kind of looking at it. You know, they kept coming up more and more. It was like, she's like, yeah, they're coming up more often because they're seeing what we're doing. And so then we were still, and then that's when one of the bigger ones kind of jumped up was to get everybody back out on the deck so they could play with us some more. And then um, she said, yeah, they usually only play 30 to 40 minutes and then they just swim off. They're tired of us. And sure enough, like it was almost to the to the minute, 40 minutes. And they're like, bye, losers. We played with you. We're out of here. <laughs> and they just like swim off. And he was like, yeah, we you know, we can't follow them after this point because that would be harassing them. And if they don't want to be around us, we have to let them go because of the Marine Protection Act, Marine Mammal Protection Act. But it was so fascinating to learn, like, that the male whales stay with their mom their whole life. Like, they will have, you know, they they go and they have these, you know, parties where all the whales get together to make more whales. But um, they'll do that. And then they go back to their mother's pod. And so the male whales will always stay with their mother. But then when the, the female whales um, give birth, they create their own pod. So I thought that was so cool. So the girls will, the women, the females will leave their mother once they have their own baby. But the male will always stay with their mom. And it was very fascinating because she said they do genetic testing on all the whales. And they have a really, really low rate of inbreeding. And she's like, they usually can tell because they stay because of the way they work. And there's more female, uh, female whales than there are males, by the way. Um, and so it was just fascinating. They have this very low um, rate of inbreeding. They always, the male always stays with their mom. Um and then when their sisters have babies, they build their own, they have their own pods. I was like, that is so fascinating. And killer whales will kill other whales, by the way. Oh, yeah. They're, <laughs> so I was like, frequently, they, they essentially, they're called the wolves of the sea for a reason. Yes. <laughs> they look so cute, but they were even talking about the little baby that was 18 months old. And they were talking about her and they were saying she's very unusual because she, um, she had, they take one of the ways that I do them is by their, where their spot is. Like they have that eye spot and then where their fin is. And then so they take pictures of their fin every time they track the pods and then like they ID, they compare the fin to the eye. And then that's how they know who the well is. But um, the baby, they were saying, even had a little nick on her fin, um, you know, her dorsal fin, because she participated in killing a sea lion when she was like 11 months old. And they said that is very rare for, because usually they don't start killing until they're two to three years old. So she's only 18 months old and she started participating in killing when she was like 11 months old. And the lady that's like telling this over the speaker is like really excited. And she has this very animated voice. And I'm like holding on to my niece and nephew, like, dear God, do not get, entrapped by that cute little <laughs> killer whale <laughs> face she will eat you <laughs> she nope, is modest they're... because she will eat you <laughs> yeah i mean nope they're yes they're adorable yes they're smart beautiful animals but the killer is in their name for a reason <laughs> believe so it or not folks i'm gonna have to cut you all off i know we have more whale stories to share we'll have to save it for next week yes uh, because epic sketch time it's been an hour Oh my gosh. And I'm kind of curious. I can see cat uh, Katie's cat 
Han, how goes your drawing of cats today? Oh, here's my cat. <laughs> oh, oh that's, that's great. I love <laughs> Not it. Not too good, but no, it's I will I practice for before there's some cartoon cat before I do that one. So nice. Baby one. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, I look forward to seeing you guys all next week. Who knows what we'll draw then? Yeah, thank okay. you for being the professor. <laughs> okay, you're more than welcome. <laughs> thank you. I'll Maybe I you learned how to do turtle next time since you got all the experience with turtles. Oh, oh turtles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I, I could, I, I've been drawing turtles since I was a kid. <laughs> oh. well, thank you, everyone, for coming. I'll see you next yeah. week. Thank Bye. you.